In this video, we'll discuss working a tubular cast on for knit to, purl to ribbing. The advantage of the cast on is that it doesn't show very much at the bottom as a row of chain stitch cast on or e wrapped cast on stitches would. And it's not very difficult to do. Here it is. Today we are going to look at something completely new, a nifty way of casting on a 2x2 two two rib. It begins with half of the number of stitches you really want to use. And since I'm working on this bit of loom that has 16 stitches, I cast on 8 of them in the middle. Knitted a few rows, just enough to have something to hold on to. This is waste yarn, it's not part of the project. And then I knitted one row of contrasting color with no loops knotted into it. This is going to be the separating yarn or um, ravel cord as it is called in machine knitting. And here is my main yarn, the pink. When you get to this point, begin knitting normally and knit three rows. Do not make a loop to start the beginning of the project. That would get in the way of what we're doing. So let's all knit our three rows and get back together when they're complete. I'm ready to knit my second of the three rows and it occurred to me I should tell you something. Do not slip the end stitch. Do a half hitch and knit on. Alright, my three rows are knitted. Here's my working yarn. By the way, there's some construction going on in my house. So if you hear banging, it's probably not Armageddon. And if it gets too loud, I'll take a break and we'll finish this later. We're going to knit the first two stitches as knit stitches. The normal kiss U stitch. Except for I didn't grab a hold of it properly. Now, here comes the interesting part. Move each stitch over creating a little bit more room. And it's important that we use a contrasting yarn for both of these layers, actually. Now what we need to do is find the very first pearl bump in the main color, starting at the right side because that's where our working yarn began. And I think this is my pearl bump. The first and last ones can be a little tough to get a hold of. So there's my purl bump. I'm going to lift it, put it on the empty peg, and I'm going to purl that stitch. So this will be the first of my purl twos. We did a knit two, and we need to do a purl two. In order to do the second purl two, We'll need to move all these stitches to the right one more time and create another hole. And now we need to find the next purl bump from the first row of main yarn stitches. There it is. Let's hang that one. And we will purl that stitch as well. So now we have knit two, purl two. I'm going to slowly turn this so that they show up for you. Time for another knit two. So we just knit the stitches that present themselves the next two. Those are knitted. Time to make space again. So we'll move all these over one. And I'm sure you can guess what comes next. We'll make another purl two. Because we have to move stitches and that can pull on them, I think that if you have the choice of using a small gauge loom, it might make things easier because the width that they have to stretch across as the stitches move is smaller. So now our knit two, purl two, knit two are moved to the right and we're looking for the next main yarn purl bump to lift and we will purl it now everything moves to the right one more time 
to make room for another, whoops, lost track of my stitch here. We're making room for another purl stitch into a lifted purl bump. And now you see why I started in the middle. All this moving in stitches is probably the most laborious part of the whole thing. And if we had to move them all to the right, it would get to be more and more and more. But these, we can start moving to the left, and the maximum number of stitches we'll ever have to move is half of those involved. Let's see. Let's seek our next pearl bump. This one's already been worked into, so this is the one we want. Now, I had a little conceptual trouble with this, thinking to myself, but we started on waist yarn. We have live stitches. How come it's not going to unravel? And, of course, the reason is because we gradually pick up all of those live stitches and increase into them. Time for two more knit stitches, and it's getting loud, so I'm going to do those off camera. My knit stitches are completed, and it's time to make room by moving these two stitches to the left. and seeking the next pearl bump, which is here. Now I'm sure you have seen why contrasting yarns are such a help. And I accidentally picked up a little bit of my separating yarn, so I need to quit with that. There we go. I need to pick up cleanly. The separating yarn won't pull out neatly if I fail to do so. So we'll purl this one. And we will repeat what we just did to make room for the next purl stitch. Knit two, purl two across. This is called a tubular cast on. I am imitating something used in hand knitting. I know of other things called tubular cast on, so don't be confused. I'm just using the name, whoops, wrong peg the hand knitting name for this cast on but there is more than one way to make a tubular cast on or more than one thing called that pearl and we knit the last two Now, when I'm going to do, the cast on is complete. We can just knit two, purl two across every row for several rows, and I'll do that off camera. Here we go, ready to pull this out. When I pull this out, the two pieces should separate, waist yarn from main yarn. And there we are. And the reason people like this, of course it needs to be pulled lengthwise, is because it doesn't make a very visible beginning point. Some people like the fact that the cast on might look like a chain or something. Other people would rather it be nearly invisible. And this is much closer to invisible. And here's what it looks like after it's off of the loom where it can take its normal shape. I did learn one thing on this one though, and that is why I told you not to start with a loop. I did start with a loop there, and it's an obvious knot. I would be I can unknot it, of course, so if you just can't stand not to have a loop to start with for your first piece of main yarn, you can use one and then unknot it. But you don't really want this right at the lower edge of your garment. Tubular cast on. And here it is in its more normal shape. I took it off of the loom.